Hey guys, Michael here. Welcome back. I know many people are completely new to lasers and maybe the M1 is your very first laser engraver and you're intimidated by it and don't want to mess anything up. All I can tell you is don't be afraid. Like all things, there is a learning curve. All you do is start off with small projects and before you know it, you'll be making these awesome projects using the M1 laser engraver. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to engrave on a piece of wood. On this project, I'm going to use a piece of quarter inch birch plywood. As with all projects, when you're first getting started with test material, use scrap wood or smaller pieces so that you don't waste a lot of material when you're just getting used to the laser engraver. Let's head on over to the XCS software and get to it. First, turn on your M1. With the XCS software already open and your M1 turned on, the M1 should automatically connect to the XCS software over here on the top right. So let's start off with the simple engraving. You can see over here on the left side bar, you can import a, an image such as an SVG or DXF picture from your computer. However, we want to start off with the simple project first. So I'm going to come down over here to the shapes and I'm going to insert a star that I want to engrave. Once you select that star, it shows up on the screen. You can move it around by clicking on it and dragging it. You can also change the size of it by grabbing the corners of it, sides of it, or even up here changing the width and height at the top. If you want to lock the ratio of the object, click the little padlock in between the width and height. That will lock the ratio of the star, that way it doesn't change proportion. Now let's go back to the M1 and put the plywood inside the M1. When inserting your material inside the M1, make sure that material is underneath that red light. That laser is used to adjust the height of the laser head using the autofocus feature. Now that the camera has seen that material inside the screen, I can take this star and adjust to exactly where I want it to be. I want to make it a little bit smaller not to waste too much material because I'm just testing the engraving of this. I want to come down here to the bottom right and change it from score to engrave. As you notice it actually changed from a border to a solid piece. Then you want to set the power of your engraving. I'm going to go with 40%. I can either slide my slider or type 4-0. I'm going to go ahead and slide my slider over. And as far as the speed goes, I'm going to leave the speed alone and leave it at 80 millimeters per second. The last thing I want to do is measure the thickness of the material. So over here to the right, I'm going to select auto measure. The auto measure is complete. It's five millimeters thick, which is correct. It's a quarter inch plywood. I'm going to move the star just a little bit more. And then I'm going to press start. So here I had the option to either framing or send it to the machine and start engraving. In this case, I'm just going to send it, press the button on the M1 and start the engraving process. All right, now that it's finished, let's take a look at the results. So as you can tell, that star came out great, but what exactly is the difference between score and engrave? Well, again, when I click on score, it just shows the outer perimeter of the star. And what that's going to do is literally draw that line around there, marking a thin line, the thickness of the laser around that star. Whereas engrave will actually fill in that star. So it depends what look you're going for. If you want to go for an outer perimeter, you can use score. Whereas you want to fill it in, you can use engrave. So another thing to consider is the wood they're actually going to be engraving on. I chose my own personal birch plywood. Well, what if you don't know what wood to purchase? You can actually go to Xtool's website and they have a ton of material you can purchase. And actually Xtool has their own material listed right here underneath the material drop down. So if I purchase some three millimeter basswood plywood from them, you would just come down here and pick three millimeter basswood plywood. 
it would automatically select the thickness so you don't have to do the auto measure. It'll also automatically pick the power and speed based on what you're selecting. So if I come over here and select score, that power and speed is going to change. That is based on Xtools recommended settings. And if you actually want to change those settings, you would come back over here. You would have to change it to user defined material. You would have to set the actual auto measure. Then you can actually change your power and speed. So now that you know how to perform a simple engraving, let's move a step forward, download a picture and actually engrave that picture on a piece of wood. Let's head on over to XES. So we're going to go with the same procedure we did previously. Materials are already inside the M1, but instead of using insert or shape, I'm actually going to come over here and select image. From there, I'm going to browse my computer and select the image I actually want to engrave. I have my image here. I'm going to hit open and the image will actually appear on the screen. So with all images, it's going to automatically select engrave. The images do not have the ability to do anything else but engrave. But I don't want this white area around this image. If you notice, when you select the image, you actually have this image edit button here. If I click off of it, it goes away. If I pick it again, here I have the ability to edit my image and I can actually erase that white around my image. So I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to select the magic wand tool. If I select eraser, eraser just selects whatever's inside that circle. However, magic wand will erase everything of that color matching it that touches it. So it's going to erase all that white at one time. So I'm going to pick it once and hit save. Now, as you can see, my image doesn't have the white border around it. One final thing I want to do is resize this to fit my material. So I'm going to drag it a little bit smaller and he's going to be just looking at my star. Then again, with everything you insert in here, you will have to adjust the settings in here. Before I do that, because I pulled my material out, I need to auto measure my material yet again. So let me click auto measure. All right, that's finished. I'm going to come down here to power and adjust the power. I want it 40%, and this time I'm going to type it with my keyboard, so 4-0. I'm going to leave the speed at 80, and if you scroll down further, you actually have the ability to change the number of passes, which is how many times it's going to repeat that process, and also the lines per centimeter. I don't want to adjust that. I'm going to leave those at one pass and 100 lines per centimeter. So then I'm going to hit start to send it to the M1. As you can see here, we have the screen again. I'm going to hit send and it has a reminder up on the screen to hit the button on the M1. Once you press that button, it will start. So while we wait on that to engrave, in addition to erasing the border around the mouse, I can actually take my crop tool and actually crop it to where I only want to see a certain portion of that mouse. Instead, I'm going to cancel out of that because I want to show the full mouse. One other thing you can do is actually adjust the sharpness and the grayscale in addition to just editing that image. So I'm going to do one more thing around this star. I'm going to, using the scoring tool, I'm going to draw a square around that star. So how do I know if that square is actually going to be around that star? We're going to use a combination of the camera as well as the framing tool. So I'm going to come over here to insert and select rectangle and draw a rectangle. And this is just using the camera. Now I want to check actually on the M1 to see is that square or is that rectangle going to be around that star so instead of hitting start and send i'm actually going to click framing now i'm going to show you what it looks like inside the m1 using my camera it may be a little bit difficult for you to see from the camera but believe me if you're actually in front of the m1 it's much easier to see sometimes you just got to get it a little bit low to look through that glass top and you'll be able to see the light going around the object so let's click framing and you'll do this the same way. You'll press the button on the M1 to start the framing process. So 
So that light actually worked pretty well. So I'm going ahead and adjust it, leaving it at score because I just want to draw the line. And I'm going to do it at 60%. So I'm going to type 60. I'm going to leave the speed at default and I am not going to touch the number of passes. Now I'm going to hit start. And instead of sitting, hitting framing, I'm going to hit send and send it to the M1. So as you can see, there's nothing to be afraid of. Just take it one step at a time and soon you'll be making some wonderful projects. That's it for today's video. Next time I'll show you how to cut on the M1. I'll see you next time.